Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. All right, it's Wednesday, everybody, and Mikey Hood is back with us because Heather is enjoying some time off. Yeah, I'm and glad I'm glad you're with us this I'm week. This has been be fun. It has been fun. Well, I, you know, I was I was thinking about this, and are you worried that a computer might take your job? What are you saying, Mikey? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't think a computer could ever take your job, David. I don't know. I mean, have you seen? No, have you seen those anchor people they have in like, it's some Asian country where they have like anchor people that are computerized anchor people? I have not. We should not talk about no, this in case the bosses not. are watching we should not this. Not give them any ideas. Well, here, rest assured, there are some things that humans can just do better, and apparently that's true when it comes to. Pickup lines. Pickup lines, yes. So there's this story about this uh, artificial intelligence expert who decided to ask this powerful algorithm, this basically a computer system, mm -hmm. uh, come up with pickup lines. Uh, her name is Janelle Shane. The Daily Mail reported on this and a few other places too. The responses are so funny that we just decided we wanted to share them with you. And that's what makes up today's list because these are pickup lines from a computer. They should reassure us all that no, computers are not going to take over anytime soon. This is so, going to be really bad. Is it going to be really yes. bad? Yes. <laughs> Looking at these. Okay. All right. The so, first one. How about, do you like pancakes? <laughs> well, when you add the wink there, Mikey, that actually, that makes that it a little bad. better. All right. The next one. Uh, you look like a stealth assassin from the clouds. Like, how does it even come up with that? I don't know. I mean, they must feed some information into it, and then it's trying to come up with a compliment. That I think is you also came up with of... these. Did you no. come up with <laughs> these? Are the all right, how ones. about this one? <laughs> I'm losing my voice from all the screaming your hotness is causing me to do. <laughs> you know what? But, but delivered that way, <laughs> that's a little better. You're, you're helping the computer, okay. I think. All right, it is urgent that you become a professional athlete. Uh, See, I, I don't know. That would be a pickup mm -hmm. line. And you're looking good today. Want snacks? <laughs> I mean, that might work for me. Like, I, I know. I, I do Anybody like who snacks. offers snacks. Yeah. Yeah, actually, sometimes it's the more basic stuff that I think, you know, this, this device was clearly trying to overachieve and well, failed miserably. So we don't have to worry about that. We don't no, have to worry about but we that. wanted to share them with you because we thought <laughs> uh, it's just funny. All right, hey, we have a wonderful update to Heather's story last week. She showed us how Pittsburgh Police Chief Scott Schubert has completed his, he did a walking tour right. of every neighborhood in the city of Pittsburgh. And so she was with him on the last walk. And along the way, he encountered in Arlington these two cats and they had been abandoned. So there was, uh, this is one of the two cats. That cat's name is Dahlia and he got help for both of the cats uh, but along the way on this walking tour he encountered them well over the weekend he posted on Instagram some very good news so his daughter has decided to adopt Aww. the orange cat named Dahlia so he posted welcome to the family and there are two pictures here of him holding this this little cat who I'm sure is so grateful for the love and attention and the warmth and the food and all of that so we just wanted to share with you that now uh, a member of the chief's family is little orange Dahlia there oh congratulations yeah to them. and he met That's her just, on the on the walking tour which is a wonderful good happy ending we love happy endings when it comes we do. Animals. Yeah. And so here's another update from a couple of weeks ago. We told you about the attention getting floral designs of a place called Fox and the Floor. Anna Dixon opened this up. Um, she started growing flowers in her backyard. Right. And she, yeah. And she was really like selling them out of her garage, which is genius. Yeah, right? <laughs> and she has like a design background. She mm -hmm. at one point in, was styling people in New York and all sorts of stuff. Right. So it's no wonder that she comes up with these incredible floral designs. She did like this lamp post and Aspen wall, and then she did the top of, of um, trash cans in Lawrenceville mm -hmm. that people were paying attention to. Well, now she's done something else. So take a look at some of these pictures. So this is right outside the Carnegie Museum <laughs> in Oakland, and she has put the floral designs on the statues. 
So like Galileo and Michelangelo and Bach and Shakespeare all got some floral love, as she says on her Instagram oh, I page. I love this. You know, really, I, I, was, I was looking at this earlier, and, and there have been studies done, done on how, like, flowers make you feel. Like, they can really oh, yeah. pick up your mood um, I believe and, and that. alleviate depression. So I, I love this, and being able to drive through the city and, and see these flowers, uh, it's, it's awesome. Well, people are going to be doing a double take, because if you drive there in front of the museum, Museum, you're not used to seeing this yeah. and it's almost like I mean the statues the whole front of the museum is beautiful and so are the statues but you you sort of don't pay attention to it once you're used to it right this is gonna make people pay attention <laughs> to those statues again so we think it's wonderful I had a chance to talk to Anna on the phone yesterday and uh, we love what she's doing so yeah congratulations to her and continued success Yeah, I love I love that I love flowers yeah, so, all right, so we told you about this a couple of weeks ago about how Zoom meetings, I have so much experience with these Zoom meetings, are making people more conscious or self-conscious, I should say, about their looks. Well, tell me, tell me the truth. Like, when you're in a Zoom meeting, how much of the time are you looking at the other people and how much of the time are you looking at yourself? Well, I've resolved all of this. I think I have told you this a, a while ago. I use the filter. On oh, the that's Zoom right. Meeting. You did tell yeah, me this. So it just and like you completely promised... filters out my face. So when, when I'm on the Zoom meetings, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you're looking pretty good there, Mikey, but it's not real. <laughs> you, see, you told me you were going to teach me how to use the filters, too. I will. And we have yet to have that I will. tutorial session. We will session. have that lesson. But yeah. the result of this, um, all of these Zoom meetings, it's caused more men to start buying makeup. And CBS, they, they did a story on this. And in mm -hmm. fact, the cosmetic industry is now starting to target men. And so they interviewed this real estate agent who uses a little bit of concealer here and there. And, and really, Google searches for men's makeup it's increased by 80%. How about that? Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, and now CBS has done this story. And in fact, there's a, um, a cosmetics company that is all about catering to men. It's called Strix. Uh, it says sales are way up, and they say it's because of all the Zoom calls during the pandemic because they, they think that eventually their business would have grown, but this has really pushed it. Yeah. I think people have gone in one of two directions. I think the Zoom meetings have either made them want to look better or they've decided, I don't care about this anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think when you're in the Zoom meeting, you do look at yourself. Yeah. Because you're one of the pictures. Yeah, you know? I think it's a little bit of both. And I, I was looking on YouTube, and I mean, they have all of these tutorials for men using this brand of makeup to show you how to do it. Like, to, to show you how to put the concealer on right. and kind of powder your face. But I mean, you, you know, being in TV, like men, women alike, like, we kind of need makeup. Otherwise, you just get washed out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, under these lights, you mm -hmm. do, but I think people are realizing in the, in, with the Zoom meetings that maybe there's a potential there, too. So, you know, you can choose for to have makeup, or maybe you choose not to have makeup at all. And that is what the new issue of People Magazine is all about. It's their beautiful issue, and so they have stars posing for pictures with no makeup on at all, and one of those people is Katie Couric. Yeah, so so um, so she is going makeup free, and I tell you, when they first asked her to do this, mm -hmm. she said, "No way, <laughs> like this is not happening." But you know, apparently she you know she decided to do it. But here's the, here's the one thing that she says. She says the best way to look your best is to live life with happiness and with gratitude. And I, I, I totally agree. I am on board with that 100%. I think you can tell when someone exudes a positive energy, someone exudes confidence, and there's just a warmth and a, and a positiveness about them, they're so much more attractive. It doesn't matter whether they have makeup on or not. I agree. And, I, and I think for women in particular, I mean, there's just so much pressure to look a certain way. I mean, right. especially if you're on TV. And so then you end up like, piling tons and tons of makeup on and really I mean that can make you look even older. Well that's what she said. She Not said that there's anything wrong with looking older but right. I mean well, she, yeah. she was saying I, I, th that's the number one thing that she thinks people do wrong. Mm -hmm. They put too much makeup yeah. on. Uh, but a very interesting idea. So check it out. We're not going to show you the pictures, but People Magazine uh, did a whole issue on this, and it's their beautiful issue. Yeah. Uh, so it's coming out if you want to check that out. I love Katie Couric. Uh, Good for too. her. Yeah, good for her.
All right, one of Elvis Presley's most iconic guitars has a new owner. So this was up for auction. This was an electric guitar uh, that he had during his comeback television special in 1968 that sort of relaunched his career. So just guess what it sold for. It sold for a lot of money. Half a <laughs> million my dollars. Guess. Yes. Half a million dollars it went for. Uh, of course, Elvis passed away in 1977. Uh, but this made me think about Mike Lang mm -hmm. saying, you know, at the end of a Penguins game, like the home games. Elvis has left the building. And I, and so this, I, I had a moment of like reckoning, or not reckoning, but like knowledge whenever <laughs> this happened <laughs> yesterday. Because mm. I knew that he means by that, that, you know, the game is over and everything, right. you know, it's over with. That means, really, that means you gotta go. You, got, you <laughs> gotta <laughs> you, go. You've gotta get out but of here. But what I didn't realize is that that came from Elvis concerts. I didn't the know that either. public address announcers at the stadiums or arenas that he would play at, they would say, left the building and it would it would be to get all the crowds to leave because otherwise people were waiting right. like hordes of fans were trying to figure out what door is he coming out of where what car is he getting it into yeah. you know so anyhow look I at, thought that was interesting yeah, I know the things cool. I learn with this show well how about this were you a fan of Destiny's Child yes yeah I, I tell you <laughs> I met them well I didn't you actually met them yeah, well I passed by them, <laughs> so okay. I kind of, I kind of. It's like the time Anderson Cooper and I looked at each That's other. That's right. Like, yeah. yeah, I know okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but some of their uh, their stuff is going up for auction. Mm -hmm. Like some of their dresses, some of the costumes that they used on the stage, they will be auctioned off this June. So also gowns from Lady Gaga, Whitney Houston, and Cher. Yes, yeah, so I think that's pretty cool. I, I, I don't know where you would wear these things. Well, I mean, maybe you could that's a good start question, right? your own museum, but I mean, I could, I could wear that on PTL. You could wear <laughs> that could. on PTL. That that's clearly jumpsuit. from Cher, that one, yeah. right? Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is, these are all uh, being auctioned off to benefit the organization called Music Cares, which is really a great group because they have helped musicians that have been struggling during the pandemic. They've not been able to make the kind of money that they would normally make and, or perform anywhere. So anyway, the auction is in Beverly Hills. If you have some money to burn and you would yeah. like to dress up like Destiny's Child. I count me in. I'm in. Okay. All right. <laughs> if you get one of those, you have to wear it on the show. I will. That would be so fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of fashion and talking style, you should stay with us because we have a lot more coming up. And guess what? Heather Abraham is asking, which of these outfits should she wear when she comes back from vacation <laughs> on Monday? We're going to tell you how to cast your vote and also pick up some free fashion advice for yourself as well. That's coming up. Yeah. They all look great they to me. They sure do. First, Hearts of Hope, how little ceramic hearts are changing lives. We talk with the woman who founded the program after seeing the impact these hearts had on others. Also had Let's Cook. Rania is here with her <laughs> recipe for seared scallops and a tropical fruit salsa. Sounds almost as good as an island getaway. We will find out how to make it. That's coming up. Mm, sounds good. Thanks for being with us on this last day of March 2021. Would you say it's going out like a lion or a lamb? Well, we'll get Ron Smiley's take on that when PTO comes right back. <laughs>